Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In the last video I showed you how to spin up a private self-hosted large language model and in this video we're taking that a step further as I'll show you how to do the same but for image generation. Now this process is ridiculously easy so I'm going to give you a couple of options. The video is going to focus around stable diffusion which is one of the better open source models. Now before I do get into this it's probably worth stating that from my experience at least the results aren't as good as some of the big players like things like Dali or Midjourney but obviously those come with privacy concerns and some of them are behind a paywall. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to install this locally on your Windows machine because thankfully there's some kind folk out there that have made this process absolutely simple. Next, we're then going to take that same setup and dockerize it. So you'll be able to have the same stable diffusion with a web UI of your choice on Docker. And you can also choose whether you want to use a CPU only or a GPU. Now, as with many of these things, it typically tends to be that Nvidia has the better time AMD and Intel can work, but there's often more setup and configuration that's required. In this video, I'll show you how to do it just with the CPU only, but the Nvidia instructions are pretty straightforward. I might potentially come back to doing Intel in the future, but Arc GPUs still aren't that popular. So let's jump straight into the first deployment, which will install it locally on your machine. Now, do bear in mind that you could use something like Proxmox with GPU pass-through or whichever hypervisor you're using, and you could still have the same experience. So you could have a dedicated Windows machine with GPU pass-through that you dedicate specifically for this. Now, given some of the topics that I cover on this channel, this almost feels fraudulent and patronizing. But if you head over to Easy Diffusion 3.0 and simply hit the download link, you can begin the download process for Easy Diffusion. So if you want to download this for Windows, just hit the Windows download and that'll start. And there's also one for Linux, which will do that for you as well. And once that's downloaded, it really is as simple as just executing the executable, going through the process, next, 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 accepting the license agreements and hitting the finish button. It will take some time to compile and download, but once it's done, you're ready to go. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So work your way through the installer, and then when you finish that, you should be able to launch it from your menu. And when you do, it usually spins up the terminal for you, it will load that up in the background, and it should present you with a nice web GUI. It really is a pretty cool tool, and it's simple to launch and configure on Windows. And so here we are, it was as simple as that. And out the box, it will have support for your GPU as it's running locally on your machine. So I'm just going to hit make the image and here you'll see that it goes away and within just a few seconds I should have that image generated using my GPU. And when it's generating that image as it completes you'll get a pop up here and you'll be able to use that to download it. You can hone in on that image, you can use that image to train and all of that good stuff. Now this is quite a powerful tool and I'm not going to go in depth. <laughs> That's quite an interesting image. And you'll be able to configure this in the same way that you can configure stable diffusion. So some of the things here you'll want to tweak to your liking. I'm not going to go into detail on this video. And if you want to add new models to this, you can go and download new models and you just need to add it into the models folder where stable diffusion was installed. So let's give it a bit of a challenge, a bit of a Warhammer nerd. So let's put in some characters from that and then let's see what comes out the back of it. And I'll compare that to things like Microsoft, which uses Dali in the background. So this is a much smaller model, and that's kind of where the issues come from. I'm sure you can probably train this model, and there are bigger models out there, but when it comes to generative AI, you're dealing with things like, obviously, Microsoft, Google, etc., who have the monopoly on data on the internet. So this looks pretty good. It looks like an army from Warhammer. Not quite sure what's going on with a lot of these weapons, but not too bad. But let's compare that now to what Microsoft spat out. And so, yeah, here you start to see the difference. Um, I mean, look at that compared to the other one. And running that prompt again, you get things like this. So, yeah, your mileage may vary. 
It's really cool that you can deploy this locally and you've got all the privacy benefits. And I'm sure that over time you can probably train it to get better and better, or you could possibly use a different model and that might have better results, but that will be a lot more involved. So let's now hop into doing the same thing, but for Docker. So thankfully, due to uh, Abd Barho, give this person a star, they put together a really cool and easy to use container for doing this. And it's quite similar to in my previous video where we need to spin it up and it has a build process during it. Now, when I did this, it took about 20 to 25 minutes to actually download, install, build, etc. So your mileage may vary depending on your hardware and your internet connection. What's pretty cool about this is you get to choose your front end. So automatic tends to be the most popular and that's the one I use. But you can use things like Invoke and Comfy UI. The Comfy UI is pretty good for advanced users because you can tweak the entire workflow. So you choose something that suits you and you can always change in the future. So moving on to the instructions, it's pretty straightforward. We need to run two commands. The first thing is to do the Docker Compose profile download. So that's things like stable diffusion itself, pulling all of its dependencies. And then once we've done that, we're going to run the second command, which will actually spin up the user interface, which will connect to the backend stable diffusion. Now, the first command you can run without issue. It's always going to be the same. The second command is where you need to make a choice. So if we hone in on that, you can see here that we need to specify a value for the UI. Now, we've got the choice of invoke, auto, auto CPU, comfy, and comfy CPU. Now, those specify directly some of those UIs we just mentioned, but equally it's GPU and CPU. Now at the moment, you can use Nvidia without issue if you have an Nvidia card passed through, that'll work fine. But if you've got an Intel card or an AMD, there is some additional configuration that you need to deal with. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna use the auto CPU just because I don't have an Nvidia card and I'm not gonna go into the weeds in installing the Intel card. But to do that, you have got instructions down here. So I recommend you start out with the automatic, the most popular fork with many features and a neat UI. So if we click on here, there are instructions for how to get this working with an Intel GPU and an AMD. Now, as you can see, Nvidia is the recommended GPU. And whilst the others can, will, might work, you're gonna to have to invest a lot more time to get it up and running. So I recommend stick with an NVIDIA GPU. If you've got it, that should work out the gate. If you don't, I recommend CPU. And if you're brave, have a look at these instructions. So let's now hop into our terminal and get this working. Okay, so I've created a new virtual machine for this in Proxmox, and I've given it about 20 CPU cores and about 20 gigs of RAM and about 50 gigs of hard drive space. You'll obviously want to tailor this to your needs and you can always change it at a later date. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is to install Docker. So make sure you've got that installed. You can check out my videos on how to do that. Once that that's done, we then need to start the installation process. Much like my last video, you're gonna to need to clone this GitHub repo first. So there's a million ways you can do that. You can either hit the code and just go here and download it as zip, and then use something like WinSCP to copy it over, or you can obviously download and extract it using curl on the command line. Do whichever you're comfortable with and then copy it over to the host. So here you can see that I've copied the files over to my host and I've just put it in a stable diffusion folder. So now in the command line, I'm gonna change directory to that stable diffusion. And then we're gonna run the commands that are on the website behind us. So sudo docker compose profile up download build. This is gonna take a while. So when you run this, go and grab a tea. I'll catch you on the other side once this is completed. So now that the first part's completed and we didn't get any issues there, we can move on to the second bit which, as I said, you need to be careful which option you select. So for this one, I'm just gonna copy this into my terminal, stick a sudo at the front, and then I'm gonna edit where it says the UI. Now, because I don't have a GPU in this machine, I'm gonna put this one down to the auto-cpu. If you do have a GPU, you can just leave that as auto. So let's run that command and I'll see you on the other side. This should automatically start the container and you'll be able to access this through your web browser once it's completed. Now, when you're running this, you might experience the following error. 
And that's because we've got a permission denied on the shell script because it's not executable by default. So if you do fall foul of this, head back into your local folder and you want to go into services. And then for this one, we're using the automatic. And here you can see the entry point.sh. So we want to go to properties and just make sure that that's executable. Hit OK. Hopefully we can press up and then return. And it's going to go through now and execute that script. So now this is completed, we should be able to reach this on the IP address of your Docker host and port 7860. Obviously you can add some traffic labels if you wanted to and you could route this then through your reverse proxy with SSL and a nice friendly DNS name. And so once you've done that, you landed with this page. So now let's try rendering the same image that we did in the desktop version within the server Dockerized version. So that's now generating. And as you can see, again, there are a ton of different options you can do in here to tweak stable diffusion. And just like the previous deployment, you can add additional models, you can train these models, and you can improve them over time. Now, with the CPU, this usually takes two or three minutes on how I've got this set up. Obviously, if you have a faster CPU, it's going to take less time. And do bear in mind that if you start tweaking these settings, it can have massive implications on RAM usage. So if you do run into errors, check the logs and make sure that you've got enough RAM. And as always, if you do have an NVIDIA GPU, I strongly advise that you use it. Just whilst that's rendering in the background, here you can see the CPU and RAM usage. So you really get a feel for how intimidating this is to your machine. Hopefully just a few seconds more, we'll have this up and running and quite handily, you do get to see a preview of what's being created. So now that render's completed and yeah, not, not too far off. Nothing like obviously what was created with Bing that I showed earlier, but hey, this is local. I'm sure you can train it and it remains private. So now you have all of the tools you need to go and do AI image generation. And like I said, check out all the different models that are out there. Some of them are trained more specifically to generate certain types of imagery. So thanks for watching everybody. Thankfully, this was quite a simple video. Arguably, it's more just of an awareness piece to let you know that it is really simple to go and self-host this stuff. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.